Good morning, everybody. Hello, I'm James from Tucan, and I'm here to tell you about what we're doing uh, as we try to build, well, as we do build and are building a regenerative future for us all. So let's have a look at that. So essentially at Tucan, we're bringing carbon markets on chain. We really see blockchains as the shelling points for carbon markets and where carbon will ultimately end up and where carbon is coming right now. So our goal and how we're going about that is to enable as many people as possible to build on Tucan and to build with carbon. And we've done this by creating programmable carbon. Uh, it's very exciting. <clears throat> so ultimately what we really want is to be regenerative by design, both in Tucan and also outside, all protocols, apps, etc. We give you the tools to enable everybody to be regenerative and to really internalize what has ultimately been externalized until this point. So markets have a tendency to externalize some parts of them and those costs are not really included in the cost of things. So for example, if you book a flight, the cost to the environment is not included in that flight, right? So like how do we internalize that inside of a market? So yeah, the slide's pretty straightforward. How do we regenerate? There's many ways. I mean, regeneration can include personal health, it can include society at large, but what we're mostly focused on is the environment, and we're starting with carbon. I mean, carbon is really a start place for us, mostly because it's tangible, the markets exist today, and there is assets that have value that we can begin to get working with immediately. So what have we done so far? <clears throat> so we started off with a Tucan Carbon Bridge, this allows us to bring existing carbon assets on chain, and this has been running for about six months now. So there is existing standard bodies out there that certify and create these carbon assets that are created through either avoiding or removing carbon from the air. And so the Tucan Carbon Bridge permissionlessly allows anybody to bring these carbon assets on chain. Anyone here can go to a retailer or a broker and purchase these assets, bring them across the Tucan Carbon Bridge, and on chain you have got tokenized carbon, literally. So that's what we built so far. That's working. It's super great and easy to use. Uh, this is a screenshot. It's very pretty. And essentially, the assets end up in what we call the Tucan Carbon Registry, which is a registry of registries. As it exists today in the markets, each of the different standard bodies have their own database and their own registry. And this is sort of very web 0.5, I would say, somehow. I mean. It's a fungible database, first of all. It's completely obscure and opaque. No one knows what's going on inside of there. And it's, it leads to siloing of these assets, right? Like, what we really want in order to create an efficient market is to have everything in the same place where value can flow from left to right and up and down. And blockchains, in our opinion, are perfect for this. The transparency that comes inherently through them, plus the ability to permissionlessly, trustlessly see what is going on and for everyone to build upon the same data source is why we think that the meta registry itself is a crucial step on the way to this vision. So once your assets are on chain, we also have what we call token carbon pools. And these are designed, inspired by the task force for scaling carbon markets, which was created by um, yeah, a task force led by Mark Carney, who's essentially a former Bank of England uh, director and uh, he got a bunch of wizards together and figured out like, what do we need to do in order to really scale carbon markets? What needs to happen in order to do that? So at the, at the core of this, uh, they came up with this idea of carbon index pools, um, carbon reference pools is what they're called actually, and we have pretty much based what we have done uh, inspired by that, we'll say. So first of all, we have the base carbon ton, which is a pool or a kind of yeah, it's a pool that's essentially optimized for deep liquidity. So it's very permissive. I mean, carbon credits themselves are what we call semi-fungible, right? Like a carbon project that produces gas stoves, that hands out gas stoves to people, has got very different attributes to a carbon project that's created through planting forest. So like, how do we manage to create fungibility between these kind of disparate assets, right? So literally the pools that we have are kind of designed in such a way that we can strip the attributes from these different projects and reconstitute them together in a way that's very fungible, but also allows for differentiation also. So the base carbon ton was the first pool we launched. We launched that about six months ago in partnership with Klimadao. 
This was optimized and is optimized still for deep liquidity, so it's very permissive. It allows most of the Vera registry, the Vera standard registry, into this pool. And um, yeah, it is the, the deepest uh, carbon market in the world. I mean, it has the highest volume in the world also. And something like 4% of the voluntary carbon market is now on chain, mostly in that pool. So when that launched, we, met, we had an impact on the price in the first six weeks of something like 25% on the price of fluorocarbon, basically. Uh, the NCT pool then is a pool that we launched more recently. And this is more of a nature-based pool. So this is more suited to what, what we would recommend for offsetting. The base carbon ton itself is not really designed for offsetting, but really it was really optimized for the steep liquidity. And that was mostly for the purpose of creating this new use case for carbon, which had never really existed before. And that's carbon as a collateral asset. And the volumes that are involved with carbon as a collateral asset are hugely vast in comparison to what most is happening with offsetting anyway. So this is why there was such a big impact on the price when this happened, basically. So yeah, we have these two pools right now. There's other pools coming in the future. But essentially, these are different building blocks that can be used when building on Tukin or yeah, pulling on Tukin, literally, or just using those assets. We'll get to that later. So carbon markets exist to put a price on polluting in the atmosphere. It's a cap and trade system. It's used mostly uh, in the voluntary market for um, commitments that companies are making uh, to their customers, to their stakeholders, to their employees. So it's mostly a way of being cool guys, right? Um, and this is increasingly important, uh, as we will see. So markets are powerful. Embed them wisely, indeed. True story. So, yeah, let's, let's go on. So what, what can be created with tokenized carbon? I mean, at this point, we've seen a number of use cases. The biggest, most explosive one was Klimadao, obviously, which went to over a billion dollar market cap in the first two weeks after launch. We've seen other use cases whereby uh, you can borrow against carbon now as an asset. I mean, the real fundamental change that's happened after tokenized carbon hit the streets was literally like access to tokenized carbon as a market or access to carbon credits as a whole was like really difficult before. I mean, you literally could retire these credits, but you couldn't buy and hold these assets at all. But now anyone can, right? Anyone with MetaMask or otherwise can just go there, buy these assets, hold them, build on them, retire them or whatever. So we've seen a lot of interesting use cases and more in the pipeline as it comes up now. As I said, Klimadao Kumo is over there also. On the left, we have carbon explorers. We have projects like Artem and Senken, which are building more visibility into these pools because we have the base carbon ton pool and we have the NCT pool, the nature carbon ton pool, but these things like are effectively commodities, right? Like you can put a tokenized project into this pool and you get back a base carbon ton token or you get back a nature carbon ton token and the side effect of this is that the BCT pool and the NCT pool are pretty much like some of the biggest warehouses of carbon credits in the world today. So like these are sitting on chain. These are sitting inside of those pools, right? So for people who want to build offsetting companies or people who want to sell this or they want to have skin in the game and actually go out there and really do something to help companies to offset themselves or individuals can now do that really easily and really cheaply. So there's no need to go and buy these carbon assets and to hold them in your portfolio because they're literally in these pools right now. I mean, you can just in time go buy BCT, buy NCT, go to the pool, redeem it, sell it to somebody, offset it, or do what you like, right? So I think like the carbon explorers that we see here, Artem and Senken have really seen this, and that's really exciting. I'm very excited to see where that goes. Uh, we also have DeFi integrations. We have markets.xyz, so you can buy and hold carbon. I mean, the trajectory of the price of carbon is going this way. It's expected to explode by 2050 by something like 500% or something like that, I don't know. Um, but you can get access and exposure to these assets while borrowing against that also, right? Buying up carbon is a great idea. I mean, for yourself personally, we should all be offsetting and buy it now, hold it, and you're also making it more expensive for anyone else to buy it, right? That's companies that are out there, they need to pay more, that's a good thing. So there's a lot of projects like Klimadao that have got this idea in mind. And I think that design space is not fully explored yet either. So let's see how and where that goes. Otherwise, yeah, you can provide liquidity on SushiSwap. I think this is a very uh, exciting uh, use case. How can we build products that are attractive to companies out there 
who want to hedge against the, fu the future increase in price of carbon, right? How can they buy and hold carbon, but make that asset work for them in a way that generates yield or whatever like this? And at any point in the future, they can then take that carbon and offset or do whatever it is that they want to do in the future. I think there's an amazing design space there for products that haven't existed before, that are only enabled by blockchains. Uh, so that's something I would say is interesting also. And then, of course, we have the metaverse and the NFTs, right? Like, we see a lot of projects that are super excited and integrating, using these programmable carbon building blocks to really, you know, build sustainability into games, right? I mean, you can literally have trees growing in the metaverse that are literally sucking carbon out of this physical air that we're breathing right now. I mean, it's kind of mind-blowing when you think about it, right? So, yeah, excited about that also. So, indeed. Yes, the outcome, plan a positive economy, right? Like how do we build sustainability and regeneration into our economies so that, you know, it's not a question of uh, reducing and offsetting later, but like let's build it in there, right? In, in the case of Tukin, for example, we have fees inside of the Tukin protocol, and in some cases we end up burning 75% of those fees, right? Like we charge a fee of X amount, and then 75% of those carbon credits are burned and taken out of existence taken out of existence to offset, right? So anyone can do that. Any DAP, any protocol, you can literally build sustainability into your DAP super simply. Uh, that's it, really. So that's introducing Tukin. Uh, we're really excited for people to build on us because that's really our strategy for going forward. We want to enable as many people as possible to have skin in the game and really build this regenerative future together. So we're here today. There's going to be workshops. If you have any questions, please come and say hello. Otherwise, we have the Tukin team here around. And thank you for your time. Hello, guys. My name is Alex. I'm developer advocate at uh, Tucon. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, and basically, what I wanted to show you today is the offset helper, which, uh, if you've listened to uh, James, one of the things and one of the goals that we want to really push here is that we want to make it as easy as possible for people to be able to offset their CO2. So you maybe are flying an airplane here. You want to offset that. Um, and the easier we can make it, obviously, the more people are incentivized to actually do it. And right now, what you would have to do to actually offset your CO2 is you would probably go to SushiSwap. You would have to, obviously, you would first have to actually get USDC. You would go to SushiSwap, and then you would have to swap that for BCT or NCT. Later, you would have to redeem it on our own website for TCO2s, and then you would have to retire the TCO2s. And that's quite a few steps, uh, especially if you want to do it programmatically. Like, you would really have to learn about each and every one of our contracts, and it would take a bit of time for you to implement it into your DAP or implement it into your protocol, uh, like automated offsetting, right? So that's why uh, we made the offset helper, which basically abstracts all those steps from swapping to redeeming to retiring. And uh, basically, it, that's what it does. Um, now, I'm not sure how technical you guys are and if we should dive into the code and explain like how it all works. Uh, how many of you guys are Solidity engineers here? Okay, that's a few. I guess we could like take a look at how the code actually works. So you have these main auto offset methods that basically just call the other methods, each one of them taking care of each one of those steps I just talked about. Alex, can you zoom in? Can I? Not like this. Um. Yeah, this is about the best we're gonna get. So, as I said, you're having these like controller methods that call the swap, the auto redeem, and the auto retire methods, and then you have the actual. You have a bunch of extra methods here that help. Like, is uh, something redeemable? Is something eligible for the the offset helper? And then here's the swap method, which basically does, as I have been saying, it swaps your USDC or it swaps like maybe if you want to swap. Uh, wrapped eat or you want to swap uh, wrap matic or whatever for bct or nct you can use this method to do it and it abstracts all that process away from you um you know it, this would 
it would take a bit of work, I guess, to pull this off and to learn about this and to do it in a programmatical way. Then we have, um, you can actually swap Matic too and not just tokens. And that's why there's this method right here. Um, after that, you got the auto redeem method, which basically, as you can see, it takes um, the, the contract for the pool and it uses the redeem auto method to redeem a number of um, uh, BCT for TCO2. And the way it works, because you actually have two options when you redeem, is you can either do it automatically, like we're doing it here, or you can do it uh, selectively. Um, basically, if you do it automatically, you're getting like the lowest quality TCO2s that are available in the pool at that specific time, but it's free. You could do it selectively. We have chosen to not do that in this offset helper because we're thinking, you know, we want to make it as easy and as quick as possible for people to start offsetting. Um, but you could do it selectively and that would have a fee. <clears throat> and then once you actually get the TCO2s, you would retire them. And what we do here is we have a loop that's going through all the TCO2s that you've gotten, and then it's retiring them right here. Now, there's a lot of stuff you can be building on top of the offset helper. Uh, like, for example, you could build an API that calls this, or you could integrate it in your own projects on chain. Like, for example, an idea we saw at the hackathon we ran a while ago is somebody integrated the offset helper such that uh, it was a social media basically where when you follow somebody, you're offsetting to follow them. And when they comment and when you like them, you're offsetting. And that's building like a, a, a green social media and I think that's pretty cool. So there's all sorts of ideas and projects that you could build on top of the offset helper and it's gonna really make your job uh, of integrating with us much easier. And uh, yeah. Do you guys have any questions as to how it works or what sorts of ideas you could build on top of it? I have actually not heard about it, but I'm actually super happy you did uh, ask this because we actually are currently in the process of building an API that uses the offset helper precisely to do this to abstract the whole thing and to be able to offer to people, and especially because we talked about like corporate companies and people that are not web free native. Maybe they want to use, as you said, a web to API where they just call, hey, I want to offset this amount of DCO2. So we are actually building that and we're going to probably announce it quite soon. Yeah, we're all in this together. <laughs> you also had a question. Uh, yeah, I mean, from a developer perspective, like, why using uh, BCT versus NCT? What would be the, yeah, I'm not sure to, I mean, I understand it's two different tools with different quality, but from a strictly perspective, it feels like, how do you make sense of that? Strictly from a developer perspective, you're probably going to be agnostic to it. It probably doesn't really matter to you as the engineer writing the code. But like, for example, we had projects that particularly want to use NCT because they have a project that is like nature based. For example, we had these guys uh, where they're building an NFT collection where each NFT is an endangered species. And obviously they want to use the highest quality uh, TCO2s and projects and they want to use projects that are actually related to those animals. So that's why they would use NCT. It's, it's really uh, a business decision, I guess. Not so much an engineering decision. To you as an engineer, it's the same either way. Any other questions? If there's no more questions, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for coming here. And yeah, have a good day.